Yeah, I'm I'm pretty far back on Bob's Burgers. I need to I need to pick that back up. I don't care. I love that show. That show is just genius. It's it's so good. It's the that first episode, season two, it, when uh, when uh, the when uh, when the bunny ears get stuck down in uh, in the in in the in the well where they're looking for like oh, the taffy yeah. man. She's like, do you really want the last the last words of your life to be sarcastic? No. <laughs> That's some of my favorite, some of my favorite delivery. No. It's almost as good as that. Uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, the Charles in Charge guy. What the heck's his name? Um, Scott Baio. Yeah. It's Scott Baio. Well, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Like anytime I hear, oh well, good for you. Like, <laughs> uh, all right. Um, is that all the games I've played this week? Pr- probably. Wow, we really probably. just sat there and bullshit for like an hour. Yeah, you know, we got the time. We're we do. Good. We're friends. So you know, friends chatting. Can't see each other anymore, like physically. Virtually, I guess. Virtually. I see you, buddy. Yeah. Shaking that ass. <laughs> Waiting for that. Uh, all right. You ready to kick this uh, thing off? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to. Yeah. I was, I'm still recovering my energy. Still trying to keep out for titles. Keep an ear out oh, for yeah. titles. Yeesh. All right, let's we did okay sp- last week, though. I thought so. All the ones we caught were pretty snappy. Yeah. We, we only caught the choicest of nugs. That's right. Choice nugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a callback. <laughs> that's a callback to, I think, before this show <laughs> was a thing. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's get started in three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of That Video Game Podcast. I'm your host, Boston. Joining me, as always... Mr. Knobs, what's up? How you doing? I don't know. I'm I'm hanging in there. I'm doing. I'm recovering from a pretty festive Friday night. <laughs> yeah, you know, gotta have one of those every once in a while. Keep you day young. Day two, day two of the recovery. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's it. Keep you young, and then afterwards you're like, oh god, I'm in my thirties. Why? Well, what have yeah, I, what have like I done? Just, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna reinstitute the three drink maximum. Like that's yeah. Apparently, I have no control once it gets beyond three. I can chisel that in a stone now. Now, as you get that tattoo, do not let me drink more than three drinks. Yeah. Not <laughs> beers, don't trust but drinks. Lies. <laughs> yes. Do not believe me because I am very persuasive. You need to wear a shirt that's just like, I'm very persuasive. Don't feed me anything. I will, anything. Talk, I will talk you into bad ideas. Yeah, <laughs> guaranteed. <laughs> that was my MO for a lot of years. Yeah. All right, well, let's get right into talking about video games. Knobs, what have you played this last week? I only really played a couple things because really only one thing had my attention all week. Um, but uh, but no, Monday Night Game Night, still a good time. You know, watching Vader strut around the around the battlefields is, is pretty fun. To the tune of staying alive. Oh, my God, they <laughs> gave him a swagger. It's so cool. Yeah. It's hard to describe. It just takes those big, long strides. I don't think he can run. He just he meanders. He doesn't need to. He's Vader. Yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, a big. You know, it, it's still fun and it's still frustrating. Like it, it, it. The biggest, my biggest problem with Battlefront is this, like the random spawning that you that you have in that game. Like it's not you can't spawn on a point. And if you're if you only partner up with somebody, you can spawn on them, mm. but there's only two people. But when you just spawn at your normal spawn point, it's sometimes over here, it's over there, it's way back here, and I always seem like I'm in the middle of something that I shouldn't be when I'm spawning. You get a lot of spawn deaths. It's really frustrating. That's weird because usually when they spawn your random locations, it's always like, oh, I'm over here and the absolute opposite of the map like a half an hour drive oh, away yeah. is where the fighting is you get over there nobody's there anymore well that's <laughs> that's the other hard part of it is when you do spawn behind everything you are way back there like mm. way way out of the way that's and then there's so- always someone just hanging back there just lingering picking people off 
That's so surprising because I, you know, it's been so long since um, what was the last Star Wars Battlefront two? I think it was on like the yeah. PS two and the original Xbox. The Xbox, yeah. That I don't remember how the spawning worked in that, and it was mostly single player that I played. But that seems so, so much the opposite of, you know, Battlefield three and four, like the the traditional Battlefield experience. Yeah, like that's kind of what what I what we were searched for is you have these points, you gotta go capture the points, blah blah blah, and just big areas with Star Wars stuff, Star Wars skin Battlefield. Like that's yeah. really what we were looking for, and it's has as and resemblance of that but not it's not that well it's such it's so disappointing because you, you know i i know and everybody knows that's a good game but it and nobody was really sold a bill of goods of hey it's star wars battlefront i mean that's kind of the shorthand for it but it's kind of well it's it's not star wars battlefield it's star wars battlefront and it's different in x y and z but it seems like it kind of takes some of the strategy out of Battlefield a little bit and kind of yeah. replaces it with randomness, which is weird. <laughs> it it is it is weird, and that and that's you know one of the one of the frustrating things about it is that it doesn't really. It, it always feels like yes, you know what your goals are and what you're supposed to do, but there's just so much chaos going on at all times, and it's it's literally hard to get your bearings wherever you are. Yeah, you know some of the maps I just don't like. I mean. Whatever the one Endor is the worst. I hate that map. Is that the forest one? Yes, I hate that map so much. How many maps does that thing have, by the way? Like three. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I take it back. You have like Endor, Tatooine, uh, Hoth, and Jakku. So, four? four. It's, it almost sounds like a Ridge Racer thing where it's like, we have like 120 tracks, but some of them are mirrored, some of them are upside down. You know, some of them are backwards. But you know, but some things like that. Sometimes that works really well if you have a limited area with that you do multiple different routes. Like Metropolis Street Racer did an amazing job of That's actually true. mapping streets. Yeah. And yeah, there were areas that were familiar, but a lot of the turns were always different. Um, I mean, in a in a multiplayer shooter, like look at Dota, that yeah. has one map. Like it, there is something to be said for a small number of maps that are really well tuned and really like tightly created that you can memorize you know in and out where it's like okay if i jump on this log and i take a half a jump i'll jump on this other thing and i can get in a good sniping spot but well I, and i think a lot of that is like even on top of that is with with this is we're not playing it enough to know where the random spawns are because i know they're not they're random to us because we're not playing it non-stop right so our and this scratch like okay where am i Okay, I gotta go this way. Right. I can't tell you how many times I've ran the wrong direction and be like, "Oh, <laughs> you're like running out of the map." You, and it's are like, you wait, serious? Wait, wait. Yeah, like you know, get back in the battlefield, soldier. Like, oh, stop it, you rebel scum! <laughs> like, just ugh. yeah. But you know, battlefield and grass. You know, we're gonna play it till we find something new, I guess. Yeah, like I kind of, I kind of feels like it has the same trappings that. Uh, that Titanfall did is it just it doesn't seem to be a lot of meat on that bone either. And it's it's kind of the the best thing you have right now. Yep. Yeah, and that's kind of sad because it, it it could have been really good, but well, yeah, it it you know, but it it captures Star Wars so well. And and I think you know your your comparison to um, Titanfall is pretty apt because I feel like. When Titanfall came out, it got received almost the same way that Star Wars Battlefront did, where it's sort of like, I mean, it's good, but I'm kind of done with it. Almost like Evolve, too, where yeah. it's like, yeah, this game is really cool and has a lot of great ideas, but I don't care. Like, not in a mean way, it's just sort of like, well, I've seen everything I need to see. And, and that's the thing, like, I don't understand how a game like Left 4 Dead like captured us for so long, was... It was, there was such a variety of play with Left 4 Dead and being able to, like, to have your opponents human on the other side, Just it was just the perfect like game night game. Is we were just Because you played both sides of it and it just, everything seemed like, very rarely did that game seem uh, what's the word? Like, uh, imbalanced? Right. Like, yeah. you, like, usually if you got caught, it was something you did to get yourself in that position. Or, like, they are just playing on a different level than oh, you yeah. are. Where it's sort of like, wow, look at those guys. Like, man, I I had no chance. Like, they are just... 
That's oh. SEAL Team 6 coming through this thing. Oh, yeah, and that's, that's the part that was fun. And even, like, and I can't say because of the limited, uh, you know, weapons that you have to play with in Battlefront, like, you had even less to play with in Left 4 Dead, but the guns mattered and how you played in that game. Yeah. Like, I, would, I, I love the rifles because I like being a decent shot in a game. And this one, I just like the randomness of a laser blaster. Just it drives me bananas. Well, I think when you look at Left 4 Dead, Le- Left 4 Dead 2 especially, I think it they did something that Valve does really well. I know, I know Valve didn't you know originally make that uh, Turtle Rock. I think did it yeah. originally, but you could kind of feel that Valve polish on the game, and I think it was really great. Uh, in there's so much little stuff in that game where it's like. Okay, here's the wall, part of the wall you can climb up. There's footprints going up this wall. And, like, you could tell when you were going to spawn. You could tell when you were going to... If you're playing as the liquor, like, you could tell when you were going to hit them with your tongue. Like, there's all this little stuff in the game where it's sort of like... You almost internalize it really quickly because it it just makes sense because the game is designed so well that... You could play for an hour or two, and you're like, "All right, I got this." Now I just yeah. need to get better. Now I need to get more familiar with it. I got the basics really quickly, and it- well, it, it's a good thing to speak to the, the level of design that went into actually playing with something that was com- could be completely foreign to anyone playing that game ever. Mm-hmm. But even at that point, you can understand what the game is trying to tell you what to do with those characters. And it feels like when you compare that the experience that you and I had with Left 4 Dead One and Two. Where and then compare it to Star Wars, Star Wars Battlefront. Like, you still don't know how the spawning system works. No. And like, that's no fault of yours, but the game should have, over time, been able to educate you about something about that system. And even it, if it's tried, it's way too obtuse to. But I to make really sense think that like the reason why they have the spawning the way it is is to stop camping. But it still happens because there are people that know what those areas are because due right. to the time they put play with the game right and i'm just a casual casual member in that community but it's just it, it's frustrating it really is frustrating I, I like too that you're a casual member that plays like maybe three or four times a week for a couple hours hey, hey no hey, hey maybe twice <laughs> maybe twice right? maybe twice <laughs> depending on how the world's going maybe three yeah maybe if i'm lucky if i'm feeling saucy yeah but uh but anyway so I, I'm back in the pre-sequel. All right. Okay. Uh, this is the best Borderlands game to date. Wow. Bar none. We we were talking about this game too at work. We had to stay uh, work late one day, and everybody else is like, "Yeah, that's a garbage game." I was like, "How what? how deep in? Like how how far did you get?" They all got to the point where I got, and tapped out. I was like, "From what I'm hearing." My good friend Nobs, you just you got to get over that hump, and then it's all gravy. It, it's gravy it is. It's way more gravy than it has any right to be. Yeah. Not only is it, and just like just from playing as Doppelganger Jack is probably the reason why I'm enjoying it so much. Yeah. And I really probably want to go back and play as Claptrap just for the one expansion that I didn't know both the two expansion packs were in this game. Yeah. The nice thing, so. Then the reason I've been suggesting um, the Handsome Collection to everybody that hasn't played Borderlands 2 is because you get Borderlands 2 plus all the DLC, which is like yes. 4,000 DLC packs. And then you get the pre-sequel with all the DLC and all the characters and everything. You can <coughs> get it for like 30, 40 bucks nowadays. Yeah. It's a steal. That's they. I know they put on the front, it's like 200 hours worth of gameplay. It's probably yeah. more than that. It's probably like easily. by four. It's yeah. at least twelve hundred hours, and all Easy. of it is really good. <laughs> I played right. Claptrap when um, my wife and I started on the three hundred and sixty version of pre sequel. I started as Claptrap. One of the biggest benefits of Claptrap in general is he doesn't have oxygen, so you don't have to worry about juggling that at all throughout the entire game. No kidding, I didn't. That didn't even dawn on me. It's great. <laughs> well. <laughs> That's even better. All right, so I might have might have another playthrough coming up. So yeah. I finished my my vanilla playthrough, and I immediately jumped right into Vault Hunter mode, okay. like true Vault Hunter mode. And you know the game's you know ratchets up its difficulty, you know, and I'm still like still playing best available weapon um, that I have. Right. Um, even though I tried, I needed some cash, 
So I put my stash, my pile in there, got a whole bunch of golden keys, just just shoveling in, just getting badass tokens for picking up perps. Oh, yeah. And, you know, just shovel out the stuff I don't want. I don't know what that chest has with handguns. It's always giving me handguns. See, for us, it's always grenades. Like, you can open it, you get four grenades. grenades. We're, we're like, well, that's not great. You close it, you get four more grenades. It's like, please, please, no. Yes. Like, I just, I need an assault rifle. It's all I really want at this point. Is you open it, and it's, assault rifle. it's two sniper rifles. And it's like, please, no. Why? Oh, even though most of the sniper rifles do have burst fire when you're zoomed in, uh, yeah. that once you get up to around the, the purple or the higher level stuff, uh, which they're fine. It's it's not the way you play Borderlands. Like, no. give, give me a Hyperion shoddy. Yeah. And because they have a real tight spread on those, they're great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that or or an SMG, I'm just gonna unla- unload a hail of bullets everywhere. Yeah. And it's just it's a it's a blast. Like it, it, playing that game is fun. There's nothing not fun about playing that game until you sell the weapon you really liked. Oh and no. Then, and then you're like, oh wait, where is this? No, no, no! I did not just do this again. <laughs> Please don't be gone forever. Yeah, and it was. <sighs> and it was. It was one of the glitched glitched weapons that I had from the uh, from one of the DLC con or one of the DLC packs. Oh. Uh... Um. Which I'll get to in a minute. So, I finish it. I found out how Jack's face gets all messed up. Nice. And it is great. <laughs> that the ending of that and you you now like the best thing about this is since I really love Borderlands 2 and I love the character Handsome Jack was just the best foil in the world. Yeah. But seeing him as the hero of his own story and the motivations of why he is the way he is is just, it's fantastic. Huh. It is from top, just the story mode alone was unbelievable. Man. And I strongly pro tip when you get to the in the part in the research and development area where you have your choice to do to get either get a really good laser weapon or the guy or the claptrap pedal and snowballs, you want the snowball. Oh really? It's a twenty nine thousand hit point grenade. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, and it and it's like a like a baseball. Like it's it's beeline. Boom. And it's just like poof, things are dead. Wow. I it's, will have to remember that. It's and it it has that little like little poof. <laughs> no ways when you hit Amazing. stuff with it. But oh, granted, you so burn good. through grenades really fast with it. You're just like, foof, 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 like all the time. It's awesome. Oh, man. But there's so many little things in this game that that, that just draws everything Borderlands together. Yeah. And I, I think it sucks that the game opens so poorly. Yeah, and it kind of, it kind of takes a while for it to do anything really interesting. I mean, the, the intro is fine, but, I mean, there's some cool stuff, especially when you get ejected out of the station, but then you kind of land into, oh, great, a side quest villa. This is fantastic. Yeah, and, like, I mostly beelined it the whole first time through, and I got to the point where I was about to go into the, the end game. I'm like, well, I'm rolling at level, like, 22. I know I need to be higher than this at this point, Yeah. so... Went back and I grinded out the rest of the side missions, and I think something goes weird with the XP in those, because I went from one 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 mission, one side quest I had, and it was a little like here fetch these three things, turn them in. It was seventy three thousand XP points. <laughs> I'm hell? like, what is going on? That's just that's just a freebie. Um, but yeah, it's that game is great. That's I really mean, good to hear. It's it's great and like I so there are the two expansion packs that are in it and I only played the one so far and I should have done them on my vanilla run yeah so I didn't know what I was in for going into True Vault Hunter mode because playing it at True Vault Hunter mode is man that raid boss at the end of uh, Clap Traps is brutal <laughs> no joke. It's it's brutal. Like I've got him down to a quarter health, I like four times, and I just get wiped because my fight for your life is down to like a second. Oh yeah. Um. But yeah, so now I'm trying to find. I need need to upgrade my arsenal a little bit because you know rolling with level forty five weapons and I'm level fifty. Like all right, come on, we need to upgrade a little bit here. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I really like I really liked all of it. 
I, I can't think of anything anything bad, and I don't want to spoil what's in Helios because it is, oh, the callbacks in this game to one are just brilliant too. Man, I really need to. I my mean, wife and I really need to play this. Like you just, I can't get through the eye of Helios is fantastic. Yeah. Like that whole chain of what's going on and and how he explains and how Jack is so amped about everything that's going on. Yeah. And then just to watch at the by the end, just his descent in the madness, man. And and seeing Roland and Lilith all interacting together. And it, here's the here's the best the thing that I like the most. So, the game set up with Athena retelling the story of what happened and why we got to where we are, and it, it opens up post Borderlands Two. Yeah. Um, and Athena telling a story to Roland and Lilith, or not Roland and Lilith, like Brick, Mordecai, and Lilith. Mm-hmm. So you finish that up, and then the last mission you get is uh, Tiny Tina saying, "Hey, wait, 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 wait! You you just uh, don't tell the story? No, 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 no! You need to start over." She's like, "What?" She's like, "Wait, no, no, I have an idea. Tell me a story about the raid boss." <laughs> and 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 Athena's response is, "What's a raid boss?" <laughs> and it, and and then Brick comes in. And is, what? How do you? What? How? Wait, what do you? What? And she's like, whoa, 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 settle down, little brother. And just, <laughs> and just then you have this little story about going to do a raid boss and a raid, like it presents it to you as like a, a quest. So you do, you do the raid boss thing, and then I'm like, all right, all right. So, and I, at that point, I thought I had done everything. Yeah, I didn't hit deck thirteen and a half, and I didn't hit the hollow dome, which didn't dawn on me at the time. Those are the two, the two DLC packs, the mm. areas. Um. Which is why in the map there's a giant picture of Claptrap because that's all taken. That whole DLC is inside Claptrap's consciousness. Oh wow! Which is the worst level designed area in video game history. <laughs> it is so confusing how to get anywhere in it. Yeah. Probably because I'm fighting for my life the whole time because I'm way under. Like I'm not. I don't quite have the firepower to really compete in there. Right. But I bulldoze my way all the way to the end of it. Um. So. The, like, so for me, like the brilliant part of this is when you're playing True Vault Hunter mode, Athena isn't telling the story to Lilith and Brick and Mordecai anymore. Tiny Tina talked her into telling it again with Brick, just the two of them telling the story again. Oh, wow. So there's a whole different set of dialogue that's going on above, over top of everything else. That's crazy. Like, that's genius. Yeah. Instead of like rehashing the same, there's a little different flavor to everything that's going on. Like, yeah, because that was a little bit of a problem with Borderlands too. Like, you could kind of just fast forward through all that stuff the second time, but it's kind of nice that it's just a little bit different the second time through to kind of push you, push you a little bit through it. Oh, it, it's it's refreshing when they guys like, oh, that's right, they're they're paying attention to the story now, and you know, little tiny Tina's complimenting uh, Athena on how pretty she is. She's like. I don't care about that. And I'm a soldier. And she's like, you're really bad at taking compliments. You're pretty. This <laughs> <laughs> uh, it just stuff like that. Like a little thing with springs. And she's like, hey, tell me you hit that. Oh, you, know, you hit that. And you just hear a background high five. Like it's, <laughs> it's just, there's just all those little nuggets of stuff that you know what happens because you know they cooked up in Tales from the Borderlands. Right. Like, why is this in here? This is brilliant. Wow. That's crazy. Like, I really think it's the best Borderlands game. It is huge. Wow. Like, there's a lot of stuff to do. A lot of stuff to do, and it's a lot of fun. I really need to play that. Uh, it's still in the pile. I don't think I've I don't think I've put it in the collection, so gotta pull that back out. I mean, I mean all right, look at it this way. So I went from never playing this game, you know, like starting it on the Xbox or the three sixty, and just petered out then starting it again and finishing it twice within a week that's the true. main storyline twice yeah and i'm really curious to see what happens if you go into true vault hunter mode because i'm real i i, I kind of think that the vault hunters from borderlands 2 are going to be sitting in the story next <laughs> probably yeah because when you go to the hollow dome like there's axton talking to you gauge talking to you Wow. Like, right from the rip, I'm like, oh, what are they doing here? Everybody's here. So, it's it, it's it's good. 
Man. I'm really enjoy- I'm really enjoying it, and I kind of want to play through this claptrap because I can only imagine the mind melting conversation that you're going to have with Jack, knowing he hates all claptraps as much as he does. Yeah, and I can't wait to do it in claptrap's own mind, like that whole s- sequence. Yeah. In claptrap in claptrap. The claptrap stuff during the intro is pretty great because, you know, even Jack at the beginning is sort of like, oh, look, it's a claptrap. Fantastic. <laughs> you know, just this immediate disdain for those guys. Well, what's even better, like, all right, so you're, you're, in, you're in Helios. You're trying to, it's like, all right, now I'm, I'm, I'm apologizing up front for this, but you got to go get a claptrap to try and open this door. <laughs> and again, I am so sorry. <laughs> and again, it's one of those claptrap interactions where it's just a train wreck yeah. from left to right. Like, it's, oh. It's so good. It's great. And, man, that writing was fantastic. And I feel bad that a lot of people have, I don't know anyone else that has played this game all the way through. Yeah. Well, hopefully some people will check it out now. I mean, the Handsome Collection is kind of where it's at. Uh, unless you have a, a fairly, at least mid-level PC where you can check it out on. But it runs great on, on PS4. I'm assuming it runs pretty nicely on Xbox One. I mean, it's got all the content you need. Yeah. How can you go wrong? I haven't really. Uh, I am disappointed that the um, that the Moonstone count is only five hundred, and I didn't realize that for a while that I was already sitting at five hundred. Oh, that's so the max. Use, yeah, use the Moonstones with uh, that one guy. What you want, like that oh, dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You buy your little crazy for Earl or whatever. Crazy Earl, yeah. Yeah. It's like even Moxie's like he's like ah, what you want? I love that guy. Like just, <laughs> there's all that all this background and stuff into it, and you actually. Um, uh, what's her name? The Large Marge. What was her name that, that was... Oh, um... I, I can't remember her I, name. I don't remember. The, the one with uh, the thing. Even, like, Marcus is, he's like, catch a gun. He's like, oh, I've been saying it all week. <laughs> so good. Yeah, it's all... It's it's all good. It's it's the amount of Borderlands you want. Like yeah. There's enough to laugh at. There's there's enough to grind towards, and there's always a little, there's always little little stuff hidden everywhere in that game. Yeah. So, I wish I'd have played it like last year. I really do. Cause it was, yeah. This this would have would have revived my entire year. Yeah, would have been the bright shining spot. But you started 2016 off so so right. I did. Yeah. I did perfect game for the perfect time. Yeah. Because there's nothing coming out. Nope. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for me. All right, I've uh, still been you know I had kind of a, a rough week, so I, I didn't really feel like diving into much new until kind of the very end of the week. So I played a lot of Diablo three and Binding of Isaac Afterbirth, of course. Um, but I picked up uh, the other day. I picked up is a new game on PC that seems to be catching a little bit of steam here. No pun intended. Um, and I realized it came out on PS4 also, so I picked it up. It's called Tharsis, uh, T-H-A-R-S-I-S. Um, it's this really interesting game that I'm, I kind of have a hard time explaining what it is. But basically, the story is that you are on an expedition to Mars, and something goes wrong very quickly, and you're missing a part of your uh, your the space station you're in, and somebody has died. Um, and the whole thing is you just have 10 weeks to make it to Mars and basically every turn is a week. You just have to make it and you have your crew members. I think you start out with five and then one of them dies. So you get to use four or six and five. I'm Um, sorry. I just laughed because someone just said it looked like professor Snape hair. (laughs) (laughs) Somebody said you look like librarian Adrian Brody. So maybe that's better. How is my nose that big? I don't think so. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the whole interesting thing is you're, you're trying to juggle all this stuff, and basically your so you have each crew member has health and stress, um, but their main method of acting in the game is by rolling dice. And you each crew member has a, a different number of of dice but so this is kind of hard to explain basically you'll go and you'll you'll cross over from one week to another and it'll say all right the ship has still has let's say four health and there's five health incoming 
and you have three events that are on on the map and you know all together that'll do five ship damage so you have to get rid of some of that in this turn or else this is gonna be the end of the game so you can go to one of these one of these events and let's say it's uh it'll take 26 total die points to clear this event out so you won't take any damage so let's say you want to send the guy with five die dice up there try and roll and see if you can add those numbers up to the total number that you need it to be and most people will have two rolls of the dice so if you don't get them let's say you roll and you get like i usually do you get snake eyes a number two and like a six and a three well you're definitely gonna put the six up there and then you're gonna try and re-roll those other numbers because surely you have to do better than than snake eyes you'll probably get snake eyes again um but yes i got snake eyes and don't call me surely <laughs> that's right um so there's that element which is interesting but there's also this each module of your of your craft does something different individually that you have to spend die towards so does your character and so does this research bar you have at the bottom so it's this it's this horrible thing where you kind of you only have a, a limited uh you only have so many limited items and your items are your your dice and you have to spend them as intelligently as possible yes but i hear you sometimes that might mean not preventing all of your damage if it means you can spend some points and get some points in research to heal all of your party members or give all your uh crew two more dice uh dice next time like next week or something like that right um add on top of that uh after week four when food gets really low you can start eating dead crew members oh nice <laughs> which hurts your health but gives you a lot more dice um and uh increases your stress but at that point of know, course it increases your stress yeah you know you're eating one of your other crew members it's pretty crazy it's a new definition of rump roast <laughs> hey oh um alive <laughs> yeah <laughs> There's so much. It seems like a pretty s simple game when you start looking at it, but there's there's a pretty good amount of strategy going on pretty immediately. But man, this game is hard. You're supposed to make it ten weeks, and I'm just playing on normal mode. There's even a hard mode too. I've maybe made it to week five. Oh, pretty regularly. So like, I know I'm not doing the most optimal. You know, oh well, I should prioritize this so i can heal everybody and then i'll do that and i'll take a little damage but i'll get it back by this this way you know i'm not I haven't fully figured that out but uh you know it it works pretty well on ps4 i kind of wish i had picked it up on pc just so i could use the mouse um but that seems like a pretty cool game I i'm i'm really happy that more more and more indie games are coming out on ps4 so that more people can check this stuff out and I, without having to say, all right, well, now you're going to sit down with your, your laptop or you're going to sit down in the other room with your PC and, and do it. Um, as a guy who does a lot of live streaming, you know, I, I'm definitely not opposed to sitting in the room and playing on my PC. But, yeah, I, I'm going to spend more time with that game, but that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, I don't yet know if I can recommend it, but it's definitely something different you know it's like the hannah and i talked a lot about um uh hand of fate last year which is this thing that's different it takes some elements from stuff that you know but kind of mushes them in a way that's really interesting and that's tharsis is really that for me early on this year we're sort of like well this is interesting i don't know if it's always successful but you, you yeah. haven't played a a dice based space exploration cannibalism game before so no, I can't imagine like uh, what party hat those came out of. Yeah, it's like all right, win, lose, or draw. All right, we picked out we picked out Mars, we picked out uh, dice. Cool, we got a pretty cool game. We picked out cannibalism. Come on. <laughs> well, we got to go with this one. Uh, Thanks, Fred. There it is. Board's board, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Figure it out. Um. 
so I actually just um, I'm I'm doing a new video series called uh, uh, this is my next game. I'm doing a new video series called Boston Checks Out, where I basically play like the first hour of a game that I've been looking forward to. And um, right before we started recording this, I I shot a video for Oxen Free. Uh, it came out on PC and Xbox One this week. Um, basically, it's a dialogue-based 2D, almost point-and-click adventure game that has a little bit of like spirit, like spirit. Uh, what am, what word am I looking for? Sort of um, almost horror elements to mm. it, where it's sort of some crazy stuff is happening on this on this island that you and your friends have gone out to party on. Um, the thing to me, first off, it looks super cool. Uh, it looks a lot like, um, same art style from Broken Age, um, where it's almost like that painted sort okay. of style, but zoomed out a little bit. Um, the thing that I think is, is so interesting to me is I've had complaints about games for years where it's, you know, someone will in interrupt someone else, but there almost seems like there's a load time between the two. So someone like stops talking and then a second or two later the other person's like, Never mind, or you know, something like that. They they interject and it just doesn't work. This game has probably some of the best uh natural dialogue that I've seen. You know, last year probably the best examples would be Tales from Borderlands and Life is Strange. Where that dialogue was was tight and it was really clean and it flowed naturally. It didn't feel like, you know, I'm searching for this next character's lines. I I think Oxenfree does that really, really well. And there's something great about a game that's dialogue focused like that when that stuff actually manages to work. Um and I think Oxenfree does that really, really well and I played probably about the first hour, and throughout the majority of it, you're these high school students, and you're going to this island to kind of have this yearly party where you hang out on the beach with a bonfire, and you kind of drink yourself stupid. Um, but pretty quickly, you find out that um, the radio they gave you at the beginning, if you go to this cave, and you stand outside these rocks, and you tune it to a specific frequency... There's something in the cave, and it sounds like, uh, it sounds like somebody calling out for help. And you go down in the cave, and it, <laughs> that's where I finish playing. I'm still not entirely sure what happens, but it's almost like something from the ending of Fez. Like really, just some crazy stuff happened, and. So far, I'm an hour in, and most people are saying it's probably taking them about six hours to beat it. Um, go check out the the launch trailer for for Oxen Free. Go check out there was a trailer that came out probably about two weeks or so. It's super cool. Uh, I I don't really know what to think about it, but I I've, this seems pretty promising, and it's from a first time studio called Night School Studio. It just it seems really well made, and it just seems like it's a hundred percent my wheelhouse, and I'm. I, I think I've convinced my wife to, to play through it with me, so I think that's probably what we'll spend our night doing is playing through the majority of this game. And I'm super excited. <laughs> um, I started playing the Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2 beta. You know, I was thinking about downloading that. You should download it, because I remember playing a little bit of the first one on PS4. I think at some point EA just gave it away for free. I don't think it was part of PlayStation Plus, but I don't remember. It's basically Plants vs. Zombies Call of Duty, but it really works in a strange way, in kind of an unexpected, where I was like, oh, this is actually a third-person shooter that's online that works. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I kind of got through the tutorial of that, and kind of 1080p 60 frames on PS4 is really nice, and shooting a bunch of stuff as... A sunflower, you know, shooting all those zombies as a sunflower is, you know, you know, R two L two is pretty, pretty great feeling. Uh, it dumped me into the uh, 
the hub at the end of it, and I kind of ran out of time, so I didn't play any more of that, but uh, I think it goes until tomorrow night, so there's still a little bit of time, uh, the 18th, for anyone that's not watching live. Um, I don't know, that just kind of seems like m more of a good thing. Um, so I'm, I'm, I may check that out when it comes out, I don't know. I don't know if I have, the problem too is, I don't know if I have time for like a competitive online third person shooter right now it's so many other games i need to be playing i know i feel the same way yeah. like i just but then i'm like back in borderlands like, it's like yeah. yeah but at least that has an end at least you can say like all right i have done everything i wanted to do so they say that's true like i'm just ugh, you It'll know always roll you back in it was like you want to start again you know it's it, like it's such a like it's a weird game because it's so loot driven and like the same thing like like i i i'm terrible at managing loot like i just want to sell everything i just want to play with my gun and then when my gun becomes worthless i'm like ah, oh, what do i oh i sold everything right it's like i don't have anything else cool but man i need something better now yep um and the last game i played this week um i i did a another video on this find my videos at bossandham.com um i checked out uh, a new game called punch club um knobs you and i very much like management sim games we uh, do yeah uh, in the same vein of like uh sim theme park uh sim city the sims most specifically a game dev story yes um, oh yeah that was fun that's punch club so basically it's a uh a love letter to 80s and 90s action movies in this uh, management sim game where at the beginning this guy's uh, father gets killed in front of him and it's your sort of it's your action movie reference uh, your your calling to avenge him and all this game is is the management sim part of sort of training your fighter teaching right. him skills getting all of his skills up and then going into fights and having him you have no control over your fights but he uses all the skills that you've taught him and uses all the stuff that you've you've been training him on to try and beat those fights and man is it good <laughs> it it punch club yeah punch club it's on steam and um ios and android right now um, I'm, I play it on Steam, and I also downloaded it on um, my iPhone. M my phone's a little small for it. I don't know if I'm having as much fun as, as I did on, on PC. Tablet might be the best place to play that. Um, but it, it, it's designed in a way that really great management games are, where you look at it and you're like, okay, today's a new day. All right, I can go... I need some more money, so I'm going to go work at this place, or I could deliver some pizzas, but I do need to work out, though, because I do need to raise up my strength and my agility, because I do have that fight coming up in a couple there's days. A, there's a Punch Obama game. What? <laughs> yeah. Leave all poor right. Obama all alone, right, Android phone, yeah. Android games. Um, but then it's like, all right, but I need to... I need to go do these underground fights because I need to get more skill points because I this guy used this thing on me that, that debilitated me, and it's that 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 sort of thing where it's kind of it's not that there are too many options but it's you kind of want to do all the cool stuff at once and it gives you that that really satisfying time management thing where you have to manage all your stats and you have to raise up your fighter but it all feels like everything you're doing is kind of getting you closer to that goal um in kind of the way that um, game dev story really did or some of uh, Kairosoft's other games did where you're always making progress and even if you know you sign up for a fight and you go through and you you lose or you just barely lose you kind of say all right okay so now I'm going to go in I'm going to sign up for that again and in a couple days I need to raise this thing up he's going to use this attack so I need to try and defend it with this you know there's always it's that cool it's kind of that management sim system that you really want, where it's kind of you're laying in bed at midnight and you're like, okay, well, I just maybe I'll just play like one more day 
You know, just, yeah. It's only like a couple minutes, and then you know, two o'clock in the morning, and you're like, oh, all right, I got I to gotta go to bed now because I got to wake up in four hours. Um, yeah, I don't – it seems really great. It's, uh, it's Punch Club. It's made by uh, Lazy Bear Studios, I think. It's, a, it's another brand-new studio. Um, it's a Lazy Bear. All right. Yeah, Lazy Bear. And it seems really good. Um, check out my videos, bossinhand.com. Um, and it just – it's one of those games where you're like, yeah, pretty immediately you're like, yeah, I'm going to play this for a real long time. This seems real good right off the bat. Um, so go go check that out. I think I think of everything I played this week, that's probably immediately the thing I can recommend to the most people. Um, even if you've never played a management sim before, um, you know, between this and between Game Dev Story, I don't want to ruin your life, so maybe not Game Dev Story. Um, but Punch Club is really, really, really good. Um, and that's all I've been playing this week, so let's take a break. All right. Punch Club. Eat more of these slightly gross chips. Son of a bitch. Why the hell did I hop on eBay? Mm. Man, they were really cool radios. Let me see if um, Punch Club is on Android. I could have sworn it is. I didn't see it. Let me look. That's why I started looking for the, whatchamacallit, the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the whatchamacallit. Soda Dungeon. I'm kind of curious about that one. <laughs> Soda Dungeon. Um, all right, it's on Steam on all three OSs. Oh my god, they made a game about Kung Fury. That's great. Go figure. <laughs> hmm. Lose weight. Slimming. All right, that is a rabbit hole. I gotta get out of this. I gotta get to the bathroom. I'll be right back. All right. Oh! Hey, don't yell at me. <laughs> oh. Hi, everyone in chat. How's everyone doing? Where the heck is Punch Club Android? Hmm. Punch Club should release on mobile soon. How soon is soon? Hmm. There we go. Touch Arcade is finally working. Sheesh. Um. <laughs> hey, hey. Boomer. Android, I can pirate it pretty, what are you doing? pretty easily. That's not what I'm looking for, Speak though. iOS trainers. That's okay. also not what I need. weird man now I just want to play more punch club A lot of this stuff where people are complaining about the Twitch Plays Punch Club. Uh, 
Uh, the official Punch Club website says... <clears throat> Punch Club, uh, can't say anything about an Android version right now, sorry. Well, that's a bummer. Oh, hi. Oh, hello. Uh, so apparently no release date yet for the Android version of Punch Club, which is a bummer. Uh, but it, like, literally just came out on iOS this week, so... Maybe soon. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. It is getting a, a little unruly. So you all moved in? Get all uh, swab. No, not really. Not really. Well, if your room's close to Alex... Ford, um, it's a tourist trap. Island's pretty cool, right? Should go with a big pompadour. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I can find the Oxenfree trailer that I saw. Oh, there it is. Right? To the islands. I mean, oh, I'll send this to you so you can watch it later, or now if you want. It's a minute and a half, whatever. Minute and a half. Oh, hey, New message. <laughs> <laughs> Who loves you, baby? <laughs> I don't know. Every time, like it always. Jeez, like all the things, like they keep moving stuff all over. That's loud. Oh, I guess I should put the trailer in chat, too, so people can watch it if they so desire. That is a cool-looking game. Yeah. Lost for 70 years. Huh. No shit. Oh, I wonder if it's got anything to do with snow. Uh, the, the same. Ah, I, I lost it. Whatever. <laughs> Whoop, gone. Yeah. That game looks it's, super cool, and the first hour is is really great. There's some crazy stuff that happens at the end of that first hour. Where I was like, oh, that's okay. So we got some supernatural stuff going on here. Awesome. So many good adventure games. I like it. Yeah, it almost kind of looks like um, a mix between that and, like, kind of Braid. Yeah. Or, no, what was, um, what was the one you were in the dark with little worms and stuff? Ah. Uh, the Twisted Shadow Planet? No. Yeah, no, the one with the spider things and... Limbo? Yes. Yeah. Man. All right, you ready to? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Knock out this next segment here. <laughs> Poke chop salad. Kudos. There it is. Chat as normal helps us out. Right. We can't remember stuff. What was the one? 
<laughs> what was the, we did that one? What was a spoiler cast for Mass Effect Two? We couldn't remember people's names. Yeah, that was sort of <laughs> that was the spoiler cast. Where I was like, man, maybe I need to prepare more for these things. <laughs> you know, fishbowl head lady. Yeah, the the alien. You know, squid the one lady. the thing. Squid. Yeah, with the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Not one of our finest moments. No. Comedically, yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, man, we have some good stuff. Good times. I'm excited to talk about Serious Wrath again, though. But Yeah, definitely. I can't wait to, to hear how everyone else hated that game. I'm like, no, you're wrong. You're wrong, and you're dumb. You can't have, you can't have your opinion, but you're wrong. You big old dumb dummies. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not everything can be dead space. It's true. <sighs> Alright, you guys ready? Ready. Alright. Sorry, are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Use guys. <laughs> Use guys. Use guys. Alright. Ready in three, two, one. Welcome back, everybody. We got releases this week for January 18th, 2016. Darkest Dungeon for PC. That's been in early access for a really long time and seemed like it was basically done as soon as it hit early access but this is kind of i get the impression it's, it's kind of the 1.0 version where it's like all right everything's done it's all bug fixed everything is this is kind of the the finished polished game uh that's supposed to be really good so i've i gotta go play it sometime yep uh life is strange limited edition for the playstation 4 xbo and pc this is the uh the physical life is strange so if you want to play life is strange uh, this is it's on disc. It comes with some other cool stuff like a like her notebook from the game and like the soundtrack and all that stuff. Um, you should play if you're listening to this and you haven't played Life is Strange. You should play Life is Strange. Yes, you it's should. It's pretty great. <laughs> it is pretty great. Um, Resident Evil Zero for the PC, uh, PlayStation Four, and XBO. I I don't know what this is. I feel like I can't keep track of Resident Evil games anymore. It's Capcom. Are you really surprised? No, that's true. They just, you know, Street Fighter everything anymore. That's true. <sighs> uh, let me see. A Boy in His Blob for PC, PS4, XBO, and PlayStation Vita. This is actually the way forward game from the Wii. Uh, that really yeah. cute one that has a hug button. Yeah. Bring it back. Maybe I can play it this time. I do. I need a hug. Uh, Dark Cloud <laughs> Dark Cloud 2 for PlayStation 4, PS2 and PS2 Classics um, I really love this game when it came out on PS2 and now it has you know, 1080p and has trophies so this might be the end of me Goodbye mm. Cruel World Oh no yeah. um, Odd World uh, Abe's Odyssey New and Tasty for the PlayStation Vita this came out last year, right? I this, thought it did. This was the like remake slash remaster of the first Oddworld game. It was really good, and I played it. I picked it up on PS4, I think, and I played through a little bit of it, and I was like, well... It's Oddworld. It's <laughs> Oddworld's Abe's Odyssey, which I had played already a lot when it came out <laughs> on PS1, so I'm good. <laughs> it's still really good. Well, but, now it's portable. Yes, and that's probably a pretty good platform to play it on. Oh, I would assume so too. Yeah, I just got to finish Grim, Grim Fandango so yeah. I can clear up my 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 hard drive. <laughs> Delete that. You know, one in, <laughs> one out. No, nope. Homeworld: Deserts of Karak for PC. It's a new Homeworld game, guys. It's here. Oh we did man, it. it's but I gotta sit here to play it. I I got so much screen space downstairs. Yeah. You just need one of those Steam links. I do. Put that I up just, to your TV. Yeah. I'm trying to see how much uh, how much this Homeworld game is. <laughs> I forgot that there was a uh, a uh, fifty dollars. Ooh! Wow, that's that. That must be a meaty game. Pre-order cool. now and receive the Homeworld Remastered Collection for free. Wow. Crazy. More yeah, Homeworld. Homeworld. Homeworld's really good, though. Yeah. All right. And Mario and Luigi Paper Jam for the thirds. 
this looks like another Mario and Luigi RPG, which I thought we just got one of those like a year or two ago. So, hey man, I don't know. I can't follow all of the games. I've let you down, listeners. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, all right, let's move on to news stories. First news story here is the Hitman game is now actually fully episodic instead of kind of episodic and kind of not. Um, uh, probably the least sub, sub, uh, susp- the least surprising thing about this game to come out at any point. Um, it sounds like they kind of... You know, last year we talked about them saying, well, we're going to release most of the game as the package, and then we'll release the end of it after a little bit, you know, once you guys have gotten through it. Um, And now basically saying, hey, guys, we're going to release every area as an episode. We need more time just to polish it, and we're going to make some sort of crazy live experience around it with weekly challenges and stuff. So, you know, be excited for Hitman, I guess. But... I don't know. I think it'd be cool to see a game being released episodic, and each episode just gets better. Like, like the look of it. Oh yeah. Like you're like your 1.0 framework, and then two point, and just keeps building and building on itself. That'd be pretty cool. Well, when Half Life Two Episode Three comes out, it's gonna look way better than Episode Two. So. Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! Right around the corner. Um, I think that's kind of interesting though, because I I feel like if there's any non-story based game when you look at like uh, Life is Strange and Tales from Borderlands and all these sort of games it makes sense to break them up by episode I think if there's any other game that makes sense to split it up episodically a a sort of mission based game yeah. like Hitman kind of makes contract. a lot of sense like here's here's this month's contract yeah exactly like that could be kind of cool and I you know I don't know if it'll be interesting to see where they draw the line between are we finished the game and then everything else is going to be DLC or is it just going to kind of be like, all right, well we originally planned for let's say five missions in the the base game. That's probably too low, but now we're just going to keep making missions, you know, mission six, mission seven. They just kind of keep coming out as episodes. Yeah. So that could be interesting. It could be one good way to be. It'd be nice if there, if they would do that and there'd be these little overarching story beats that just kind of keep, ratcheting up as you go into it kind of like they do on a like an episodic tv show yeah that's what i was just drop, say, drop like, a little threads you know yeah like and then by the end of the the season all this stuff comes to a head and you're like oh right that's that stuff from contract two yeah okay that could be pretty cool i don't know i know a lot of let's people see are- if they can let's see if they can pull it off or execute it i mean the the trick is is getting releases on time yeah, and I mean, Square Enix published um, Life is Strange, so I mean, I feel like at this point they have the experience as a publisher, so that they can sort of drive Idos to keep to a timeline on this. So, if there's anybody that I'm going to trust to publish a uh, uh, an episodic game correctly, it's going to be Square Enix at this point. But <laughs> from the development side, that's kind of the point where you sort of say, well. Idos yeah. has been making great games, but can they put out an episodic game? Just put, just have don't don't nod make a Hitman game. <laughs> Why not? Talk you out of killing people. Yeah, they made remember they, me. That was a third person brawler. So oh, call that uh, negotiation, Hitman negotiations. Oh man, I would play that. That'd be good. Um, next news story here, uh, EA is putting out EA Access on the PC. It's been on the Xbox One for over a year now, I think. Um, and it's basically, hey, you pay us $5 a month for this subscription. You can get access to games early. Uh, typically it's like, you know, you can play the game a week early for... 15 20 hours and then when it comes out you can kind of play the the whole thing you get uh discounts on on games like 10 percent off on games dlc and add-ons you get free uh versions of old games you know on xbox one uh recently i think it was they're like hey this game's this month's free game is just dragon age inquisition go crazy <laughs> so for five bucks you got a hundred hour game um i think that I think that's pretty interesting for PC. 
Uh, EA has a really huge backlog um, on the PC through Origin. And I guess sort of unfortunately you have to use Origin, but which isn't that bad. But um, I, that could be kind of interesting because I don't think we have a subscription plan like that for anybody else on PC. No. Hmm. Maybe you play, but I don't think that's really a subscription. Yeah, I don't think so. So, like the on the EA Access page right now, um, the vault games that they're uh, sort of pimping here are like Battlefield Four, Dragon Age Inquisition, Sim City, the actually Plants vs Zombies, Garden Warfare, Dead Space Three and Two, and One. Like right. there, there's some some pretty good games here that you just kind of get with your subscription. And there's a bunch more games that, like FIFA 15 and stuff that we're really not going to play. Um, but it seems like they, that's... If you like a lot of EA games, it seems like it's a pretty a pretty good deal. I know a lot of people want to poo-poo it because, oh, EA's just taking our money every month, but I don't know, man. If you're going to play these games anyways... Yeah, I mean... Save it's a little only, cash on them? Right, it's early. only five bucks. Yeah. Five bucks isn't that bad. It's cheaper than Netflix. <laughs> like that's a that's a pretty good deal. Uh, and the last news story we have here is the PS2 version of Psychonauts will come to PS4 this spring. Double Fine has announced. Um, so if you haven't played Psychonauts and um, you want to play it before Psychonauts 2 comes out, the PS2 version of Psychonauts was fine. Um, yeah. So they'll probably sort of ru- uh, clean up the rough edges. Uh, the Xbox version of that game looked way better uh, than the PS2 version did. Obviously, yeah. um, <laughs> dredging up old fights, um, but the PS2 version of that was fine. And you, if you really want to play it, you probably get it on PC. Hook a 360 controller into it; it's probably like three dollars. So you could do that. But uh, all right, that's all the news stories we have because nothing is happening. So I think everybody's on vacation. Uh, so let's get to tweets. What's going uh, on, tweets? Adderblack39 writes, Have you ever tried taking a break from gaming due to gaming fatigue or other reasons? I mean, doing this show weekly makes that tough to just be like, I'm not playing games this week. Yeah. I think we we try pretty often by picking up like a comfort food game and being like, Look, all, the, all I played this week was Diablo 3. I had a crappy week. I just needed to play something while I was watching TV. Diablo 3 was the game this week. Um, it's been Borderlands for two weeks for me. I mean, yeah, like I'm just I'm all happy being in on Pandora and Elpis. So yeah, I I feel like I feel like what what happens to me when I get gaming fatigue is I I sort of revitalize it with some old game from my like I'll go play Symphony of the Night. And I'll be like, man, that game is really great. All right, back to this other thing. You know, like, you kind of clean your palate with something you know is really good or something you know like the back of your hand, and you're like, all right, let's go back to this other thing. Right, then you find some game that plays similar to that, and then you just build on that, and then you end up playing uh, a third-person action game. You're like, all right, all right, fine, I got them back in. Yeah, video games are all right again, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Not to be as angry as I am. Yeah. (laughs) With Halo. (laughs) I still got to finish it. Yeah. Yeah, someday. You can take your time on that. Got all year. It's true. Uh, we have an email from Zach. Uh, hey guys, what villain was the most satisfying to defeat for you in any video game? Uh, and which was the least satisfying? Most satisfying and least satisfying? Oh, God in a Sir's Wrath. <laughs> yeah? It was the best. It was awesome. Um... I'm trying to think of most sass. I almost want to say like we've been talking about Borderlands Two. Handsome Jack at the end of Handsome Borderlands Jack. Two was kind of most and least at the same time. That boss fight was pretty cool, but it wasn't really against Jack. No, it was just the Guardian. And then when you killed Jack, it was sort of like, oh, well, well, okay. Yeah, he did kind of go out with a whimper. Yeah, but the Guardian was kind of fun to fight. That was an interesting fight. Oh, the vault monster in pre-sequel is amazing. Yeah. Oh, it's like this three-headed 
monster. It's great. I guess you could put least satisfying death for villain as the vault monster from uh, Borderlands One. One. Yeah. Where you literally do not have to move uh, to kill it. Ooh, there's a cameo for that thing. Really? Two of them. Great. <laughs> Uh, Poke Chop Salad in chat says Oryx from the Taken King. Actually, that is a really good, um, that's a really good one. Um, especially when you when you kill him at the end of the raid, um, I feel like that's a really satisfying end to a a a pretty mechanically difficult boss fight. Mm. Um, I think. Uh, I think Crota from that from the second raid is also really good too, but. Unless you're the the guy who's carrying the sword, it's maybe a little bit less cool, but you get to see it, which is kind of fun. Um, most satisfying villain. Hmm. I, I feel like I don't know. End of Strange was pretty good, or Life of Strange is pretty good. Yeah, that was a good. That, that had a. <laughs> that was very rewarding. Yeah. Oh, screw that dude. <laughs> um, oh, man. I feel like I don't... I'm trying to remember. I, I have, I've been playing a lot of games recently that may not necessarily have, like, a real serious villain. Um, I'm playing, like, a lot of Binding of Isaac, which is... I mean, the villain is Mom, but... The first time you beat Mom, that's that's very... That's very satisfying, but after that, it's, I mean, the kind of thing you're you're doing all the time. Well, I mean, like, oh, uh, Castlevania Lords of Shadow, that uh, fighting Satan at the end of that one was like, just a great battle. You know, most Visually, of those, it was just really good. Those last couple battles, especially where you're fighting that bone dragon that you're on yeah. top of, and, man, that game was good. That game was amazing. Sheesh. <laughs> should go back and play that again um i don't know i'm trying to think of any like rpgs i've played recently that had a really great villain at the end nothing really though that's kind of a bummer this is a really good question yeah. that kind of has not a great answer where i'm sort of you like, know what i have to say sovereign was pretty disappointing in in mass effect yeah that just kind of was a thing that happened you know, it, I'm and, to, and the Reapers, the Reapers at the end of three were like, ah. I'm I'm actually thinking like Mass Effect One's final boss was fine. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. Two, well, Saren was the Saren fight outshadowed the fight against Sovereign. That's true. Two with the Terminator was okay. Yeah, I thought that one was. I thought that one was at least interesting. It wasn't very difficult, but it was at least kind of cool. And oh yeah, the whole the just... whole collector thing, which is the whole lead up to it, was it crescendoed at the right point as you were fighting it. Yeah, man, Mass Effect Two was so good. I was yeah. just thinking about that final mission in Mass Effect Two. Man, I, that was such a good mission because you never felt like you were safe. Like you actually oh. felt like you were in somebody else's stronghold, and just they had they had almost every advantage. Yeah, like the locust is coming out of the woodwork. Like, it was crazy. Yeah. Actually, what? Um, let's think about Mass Effect, or uh, Gears of War. Uh, uh, Ram wasn't a great fight in the first one, but satisfying to yeah. beat because it was really yeah. hard. Three had a really good final boss fight. I thought that was yes. satisfying. Oh, three was amazing. Yeah. Ooh, Dimebag in chat says the ending of Sleeping Dogs. That was pretty satisfying. That that story built built really great, and then that final that final fight was sort of like, yeah, I'm doing it. This is what I was yeah. wish. This is what I'm hoping for. I'm doing it, guys. Yeah, that was some kung fu shenanigans at the end of that game. That was awesome. Yeah. Hey, you kung fu treachery! Man, that game was good too. Everyone should go play Sleeping Dogs. Get it on PC. Your PC can run it. It's good. I'm. Ch I wish I thought. I wish I could remember more boss battles at this point, but. Maybe that's a good commentary about boss fights. We're not well, I mean, the boss, I mean for, for me, like most boss, fight, boss fights have t ended up into a, like with Borderlands, it's just raid bosses. Like it's just something you just want to, you can fight over and over again. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be satisfying. Yeah, that's true. And plus all the loot. It's like Christmas. All that pretty loot. 
Uh, all right, that's all of our emails and tweets this week. Thank you very much, everyone, for writing in. We always appreciate it. If you'd like to visit us, you can do so at tvgp.tv. Email us, tvgpfans at gmail.com. Tweet us at tvgp, and everything else is on the right-hand side of the page. And don't forget to join the forums. Please mark yourselves on the map. Uh, join us for our week of game nights. Uh, Monday night is Battlefront on the Xbox One. It is 10 p.m. EST. Uh, Tuesdays, are you guys still doing Destiny? Yeah, they're still doing Destiny. I think some people have, yeah. Yeah, still doing Destiny on Tuesday nights. Wednesday nights, Rocket League. I'm assuming that's still going. Uh, Thursday night, Steam game night. Shoot me some messages. Let me know what you guys are are, are playing, because I wouldn't mind doing some UT yeah. fun again. Um, and then Friday through, th- Friday through Monday, come on and get us. Um, actually, I forgot one more question here, so let's talk about Game Club, and then we'll... We'll answer this question here real quick. Um, this Game Club Game of the Month is Nobbs' uh, Asura's Wrath. Nobbs yes. made it himself. He's very proud of it. Uh, yeah. You should play Asura's Wrath. It's not very long. It is very good, and you should buy the DLC. It's probably cheap at this point, um, but it, it kind of it kind of finishes because, the story. Hence, probably one of the best boss fights. Yeah. And, and definitely in that game. All the boss fights in that game are satisfying. Yeah. Every one of them. And how long is the game? Like six, seven hours? Like, isn't it less than ten hours? It depends on what health bar you have equipped at that point. Yeah. But normally you're playing through the normal one. You play the game on easy. You don't need to kill yourself playing it stupid yeah, like I am. Yeah, the story is what you really care about. Because the story's really good. Yeah. Really good. So pick up a Sir's Wrath. I think uh, it's a couple weeks, three weeks or so until the recording. So you still have plenty. Yeah, fourth of time. or 11th, I think. Yeah. Uh, and the question I forgot was from Poke Chop Salad in chat. Since there have been a good amount of PS1 classics released, my Vita has become an RPG machine. I went back and started Suikoden in 2 over again, and it's still amazing. Is there an RPG that you played once and would like to go back to just to plink away at? Oh, Lost Odyssey. I really want to play that again, but that game's lost to the ether for me. You know, I saw a commercial for... Somebody had linked me a commercial for Lost Odyssey... And it was that Jefferson Airplane commercial. Do you remember that? Yes. I forgot about that. And watching that commercial, I was like, I need to play Lost Odyssey again. <laughs> the What was it? The, the White Rabbit, I think it was. Yeah. And it's yeah. like a three minute long commercial. And I was just like, who, who thought we should market it this way? Also, that game was really good. So, yeah, like, I really want to get back, because the thing I loved was the music in that game, which is so... Oh, it's so good. That map theme? That little map, the guitar, it's just like, oh, man. It's so good. I, I would also kind of like to play through it again, half remembering the story of that game and half forgetting it. Like, yeah, I, remember so the, I honestly don't remember what happened. I remember different spo- story beats I remember and the ending, character in it. But, it, like, uh, beyond that, like, I... I kind of, but I don't. I don't remember how long it was. Let's look up. Let's look it up on how long to beat. I remember when I ran into that uh, one of those optional bosses at Sea Beast and he just beat the crap out of me. Yeah, I remember the Sea God or whatever it was. Some of that game that turned out to be really hard. Lost Odyssey. Uh, main story fifty hours. Huh. I never played the DLC either. Oh, I never did either. I forgot it came out because I think we had finished it and. At some point, there's well, some DLC, and I was like, no, I'm good. No, I mean, I clocked in 80, 90 hours in that game. Yeah. Man, that game was good. Yeah, I, I think that would be my choice. We lost Odyssey. I'd like to, like to re, if I had the time, I'd like to revisit it and see, you know, is that game still... That would be one game that I would want to go home to again, and if it didn't 100% live up to... The game that I really loved, I, I would probably be okay. I, I don't think I'd be torn up if Lost Odyssey wasn't like this perfect game. <laughs> yeah, Lost Odyssey. It's a, one of the Xbox 360's f- few four-disc games. <laughs> yeah. Man, it was a beast. Uh, all right, but thank you very much, uh, Pugshot, for, for writing in on that. That was a good question. Uh, the only answer is Lost Odyssey. Um and don't Not forget, on the Vita. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and don't forget all that stuff we talked about before. Thank you very much for listening. We'll see you all next week. Laters. All right. I have uh, three titles. <laughs> I missed every one of them. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I have, they gave him a swagger, which I think is great. Uh, the gravy hump, which probably isn't a title we can use. And blob hug. Blob hug. I like blob hug. Um, I kind of like they gave him a swagger. Yeah. That feels like a good title. That, that feels good. I'm going to circle it. All right. Starting in. I forgot. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see. The end of Strange. Yeah, you I kind think of. Dime Bay put that. Yeah, when we were talking about the. Uh, Life is Strange, yeah. Yeah, the up. end of Life. <laughs> yeah, end of Strange is. Maybe not a. A title that. Don't look that up in Urban Dictionary. Yeah, don't, don't Google that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, starting in. Three, two, one. This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 430, for January 18th, 2016. They gave him a swagger. Oh, strut, Vader. <laughs> strut, 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 strut. <laughs> all right, thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Uh, always appreciate it. Uh, and we'll see you 